Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Verse 5, and God called the light day and the darkness. He called night and the evening and the morning were the first day. Verse 6, and God said, let there be a firmament. Let's stop right there. What in the world is a firmament? Okay, let's read on now because sometimes the Bible explains itself. It usually does that, okay? Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. People say, oh, Eric, I know what the firmament is. It's the dirt. The dirt keeps the water away from the water. No, that is not the firmament. Good try, though, good try. Check out verse number 20 of Genesis chapter 1. It says, God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl, uh, that's a bird, not a baseball or a basketball, okay? Um, fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. Um, the birds do not fly in the dirt. They fly in the air, okay? So the firmament, also referred to as the first heaven, is the atmosphere, what we're breathing right now. You guys got a little taste of heaven every single time you breathe, okay? Because the firmament is the atmosphere, the first heaven. There's more than one heaven, by the way. Remember, God said, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night. Second heaven is outer space, where the sun, moon, and stars, and some of you are at right now. There's also a third heaven. You guys remember the story about the Apostle Paul when he got rocked to sleep? Or no, uh, stoned to death. Yeah, he got stoned to death outside the city of Lister. It says he was caught up to the third heaven. There's more than one heaven. There's three of them. Our atmosphere, outer space, and then where God lives, there are three heavens. The Bible says the heavens plural, declare the glory of God. Okay, verse number seven. And God made the firmament, the atmosphere, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament? Hold on here. What's going on here? Water above the atmosphere? Is that really possible? Is that really what it used to be like? I think so. David, the psalmist, said in Psalms, Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. That's what I think Second Peter chapter 3 was talking about, how the earth was standing out of the water and in the water at the same time. Because I believe the pre-flood world, when it was good, I believe the pre-flood world had a canopy of water that surrounded earth's atmosphere. Now, i got to tell you, not all creationists believe this theory, but I happen to believe this theory, and I happen to believe there's lots of evidence that, to go along with this theory, and the Bible, I believe, supports this theory. So I believe the pre-flood world had a canopy of water that surrounded Earth's atmosphere. You see, Earth's atmosphere today has got six layers to it. you got the troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, th uh, thermosphere, ionosphere. It used to have a seventh layer, a hydrosphere. Now, this layer of water would have done a number of things for life on Earth, okay? If you had a layer of water surrounding Earth's atmosphere, it would condense Earth's atmosphere into a smaller area, giving you more what they call atmospheric pressure. That's right. And guess what? If the canopy had enough water to flood the Earth, you'd be increasing the pressure to an unbelievable level, increasing the heat astronomically as you do so. Noah would have been living in a fucking oven if this hydrosphere even existed. But let's for a moment entertain the possibility that such a structure is even gravitationally viable, and that general relativity is bollocks. Because Hoven's water canopy is suspended above the atmosphere, it would essentially be an enormous block of ice, which would shatter due to changing barometric pressures, and would crumble back onto the Earth. And even if the canopy was, by some miracle, still in liquid form, the friction of having to travel at orbital velocities would generate enough thermal energy to completely annihilate the canopy. Put simply, this water canopy is inconsistent with the laws of physics for a myriad of reasons that I've only just begun to discuss. Right now you guys are under 14.7 pounds per square inch of atmospheric pressure. Well, who knows what it was like before the flood if there was a layer of water surrounding it. There might have been more atmospheric pressure. Uh, so the world would have been very, very different before the flood with this layer of water surrounding it. Now, by the way, not only was there a layer of water surrounding the atmosphere, I also believe there was a layer of water underneath the crust of the earth. The Bible talks about this. 
It says he stretched out the earth above the waters. Interesting. Another place in Psalms it says, The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof. He hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. I believe the pre-flood world had a built-in sprinkler system underground. It was really cool. The Bible talks about that in the Garden of Eden, how a mist went up from the ground and watered the whole face of the earth. I believe the pre-flood world had a built-in sprinkler system. There was water underneath the crust of the earth. By the way, there still is water underneath the crust of the earth in many places, okay? What you're referring to is called groundwater. And if there was as much water underneath the earth's crust as you imply there was, the density, and by extension the heat, would have been sufficient to vaporize that water. Just look at the layers of the earth. The inner core is the hottest part of the planet, followed by the outer core, the mantle, and finally the crust. Notice something? The closer you get to the center, the hotter it gets. There is no way in hell that water could have existed that far beneath the oceanic crust. So the original creation was very different than what we currently see today. The original creation was... good. Good? Are you fucking kidding me? We're talking about an atmosphere that's hot enough to vaporize all the liquid water on the planet, and a suboceanic canopy of water that would severely disrupt convection currents coming from the mantle that could potentially lead to geological disasters of epic proportions. This model is not good, and thankfully there is no evidence to indicate that any part of this is true. And it was very, very good. You say, well, Eric, what happened to all that water? The water that was above and the water that was below, where, where is it now? Well, it's still here, it's just not all in the same places. You say, well, how did it come down? The Bible tells us about that in Genesis chapter 7. Check out what it says. That same day, all the fountains of the great deep broke up, and the windows of heaven were opened. This is talking about when the flood came to destroy the world. I believe when the flood came, the water that was above came pouring down, and it rained for 40 days and... 40 nights, and the water that was above the atmosphere came pouring down as rain. And the water that was underneath the crust of the earth came shooting up out of the ground as the earth cracked because of the weight of all this water. What the fuck? The weight of rainwater cracked open the earth? Are you high, Hovind? The oceanic crust by itself is six miles thick and is primarily made of basalt. Basalt has a tensile strength of an astounding 4.84 gigapascals. These numbers are mind-blowing. If we use nothing but nuclear weapons to try to hollow out the Earth, we would have a lot of trouble just getting past that basalt. Nuclear fucking weapons, Eric. And you want us to believe that rainwater, falling at 9.81 meters per second per second, will crack open six miles of one of the toughest rocks on the planet? Maybe that's why we still have fault lines in the world today. You know, there are fault lines that go all over the globe today. I've been to many of them, the Nematic Fault, the Hayward's Fault, the San Andreas Fault. None of them are my fault, but I've been there, seen them, have a t-shirt. These fault lines run all around the world. I can't help but think, what if those are when the fountains of the Great Deep broke up, just like the Bible told us happened at the time of the flood? No, Eric. Just no. No. Fault lines are the byproduct of earthquakes, which are caused by tectonic plate shift. You can literally see the ground open up, or even slide, during an earthquake. These are not scars left over from rainwater. And incidentally, don't you find it odd, Eric, that the damage done to the earth isn't uniform? Doesn't it at least grind the dusty gears in your head when you see that instead of a pockmarked earth, we have cracks that extend across the lengths of the tectonic plates? You fucking idiot. Interesting.